and Caesar's spirit, ranging for revenge with Ate by his side, come hot from hell, shall in these confines with a monarch's voice cry, Hamlet! And let slip the dogs of war. His works were either born great, achieved greatness, or had greatness thrust upon them. At this hour, lie at my mercy, all mine enemies. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. Good day to you. And today, we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 plays by William Shakespeare. If I can cross him any way, I bless myself every way. For this list, we're focusing on the specific works from Shakespeare that were penned to be performed on stage and not on his bibliography as a whole. My reputation, Iago. My reputation. Also, we're basing our ranks not necessarily on what we believe are his best plays. I mean, neither choose who I would nor refuse who I dislike. But also those that have withstood the test of time, continuing to influence modern writers and performers, as well as remaining relevant to contemporary audiences. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. Number 10, The Merchant of Venice. Graziano speaks an infinite deal of nothing more than any man in all of Venice. Written sometime between 1596 and 1598, this early comedy from Shakespeare centers on a Christian merchant's debt to a Jewish moneylender and the latter's building relentlessness to get his due. He hath disgraced me and hindered me half a million, laughed at my losses, mocked at my gains, scorned my nation, Thwarted my bargains, cooled my friends, heated mine enemies, and what's his reason? I am a Jew! While modern scholars debate the play's potential presentation of anti-Semitism, it is collectively agreed that this late 16th century play showcases stronger themes of self-interest versus love, the wording versus the spirit of laws, and the quality of mercy. In truth, I know not why I'm so sad. It wearies me. You say it wearies you. And such a want wit sadness makes me that I have much ado to know myself. As a result, The Merchant of Venice continues to be a popular pick for theater productions and has spawned over a dozen different film adaptations. If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? And if you rogue us, shall we not revenge? Number nine, Much Ado About Nothing. <sighs> The Prince and Monsieur Love. Don't let the title deceive you, as nothing is the polar opposite of what brings much ado here. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. With Shakespeare being known for his play on words, with nothing actually being a homophone for a similar sounding word meaning rumor, one of the play's core themes. You have no employment for me? None but to desire your good company. Oh God, sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Ah! Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Senor Benedict. Considered one of his best and more insightful comedies, Much Ado About Nothing successfully hatches out its targeted laughter with language while simultaneously taking on classic themes of honor, deception, and public status that modern audiences can relate to today. May a man do it. It is a man's office but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is not that strange? Number eight, Othello. I am not what I am. Written circa 1603, Othello was adapted from Italian novelist Cinthio's short story, A Moorish Captain, and tells of the tragic events that transpired following a Moorish general's marriage to a significantly younger Venetian woman. Pleasure and action make the hours seem short. With a broad array of timeless themes including racism, jealousy, betrayal and revenge, Othello continues to be performance preference for stage communities aplenty. Oh beware my lord of jealousy, tis the green-eyed monster that doth mock the meated feeds on. Outside acting adaptations, the play has even inspired multiple musical, artistic, and graphic novel interpretations, proving how much everyone loves a good backstabber story, provided it's not their backs being stabbed. Arise, black vengeance, from thy hollow cell. Yield up, O oh love, thy crown and hearted throne to tyrannous hate. Number seven, Julius Caesar. A 
The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. Speaking of backstabbers, here's the ultimate tale in the genre brought to us by way of a ruler and his circle of officers slash friends turned conspirators. Beware the Ides of March! Perfectly written for its time, when England was experiencing its own worries of conspiracy, murders, and civil war, the play has remained ever so relevant with its insights on politics and themes of patriotism and friendship. It too brutally then falls Caesar. Though Caesar's assassination was repeatedly dramatized during Shakespeare's time, it's the Bard's version that has withstood the test of time, with modern renditions continuing to captivate audiences, inspire similar stories, and of course provoke political discussion. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears! I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. Number six, Richard III. Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this son of York. Written around 1592, Richard III is one of many of Shakespeare's fictionized renderings of past English monarchs. So wise, so young, they say it will never live long. As his second longest play, the initial success for Richard III was generated with the hype and build-up from its three immediate Henry VI predecessors, forming the playwright's first tetralogy. And off with his son George's head. With the titular character being one of literature's most notable and mimicked antiheroes, the story and character of Richard III has strongly influenced modern storytellers with nods and allusions to the play discreetly found in virtually every corner of pop culture. A horse! A horse! My king a horse! Number 5, King Lear. Take thy reward. Turn thy hated back upon our kingdom. Imagine losing your marbles over trying to divide your wealth among a circle of aggressive heirs. How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is. Written during the later period of his life, King Lear was originally met with mixed reception from Shakespeare's contemporaries for its incredibly depressing tones and its suggestions about the family structure. Are they informed of this? Shortly after the English Restoration, altered versions showcasing various happy endings were ordered for performances. I pray thee, daughter, do not make me mad. However, at the turn of the 1800s, it was returned to its gloomy glory and has since inspired countless adaptations and reimaginings, a notable one being in the form of the hit Fox drama, Empire. I need to start grooming a successor, and it can only be one of you. Number four, A Midsummer's Night's Dream. The course of true love never did run smooth. You know you have a master writer in your midst when they somehow manage to mesh romance, fantasy and farce all equally into one story. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. A Midsummer's Night's Dream has been consistently cited as one of Shakespeare's most absurd and ridiculous works, but not necessarily in a bad way. I grant you, friends, if I should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. It is precisely the comedy's inclusion of fairies, love potions, donkeys, and more that make this play all the more, well, playful. I'll put a girdle around about the earth in 40 minutes. That's why even this mad mash of moronic mix-ups continue to garner attention for its non-conventional storytelling and themes regarding love, the nature of dreams, and the blurred lines between the real and the unreal. I know a back where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. Number three, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? We all know love conquers all, except in this play. What's in a name? That which you call a rose, by any other name would smell as sweet. Considered to be one of the most influential narrative works in all of history, the bond between these titular star-crossed lovers, 
despite the ancient grudges between their families, has been a beacon of inspiration for many creative minds and adolescent hearts. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Though initially regarded as a failure by many of Shakespeare's contemporary critics, this underdog tragedy secured its immortality from being one of the few plays that cater to and feature both the young and old. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Today, it stands as Shakespeare's most accessible work, spawning more on- and off-stage reimaginings than any of his other plays. It is the East, and Juliet is the sun. Number two, Macbeth. When the battle's lost and won. Considered to be Shakespeare's grimmest play, the tragedy of Macbeth follows the titular protagonist who is a Scottish general who murders his way to kingship and is consequently instilled with guilt and paranoia, resulting in the additional murders of his subjects. I dare do all that may become a man who dares do more is none. Having such a dark narrative, many theater buffs and particularly stage crew members believe the play to be cursed and will refer to it instead as the Scottish play when in works for production. If chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir. Still, Macbeth remains a haunting classic among modern audiences, scholars, and performers, with the titular role kickstarting the careers of future stage and screen greats, including Sir Laurence Olivier, Sir Ian McKellen, and Orson Welles. What's done cannot be undone. Before we raise the curtains for our number one pick, oh boy. here are a few honorable mentions. Now for conspiracy. And gentlemen in England, now our bed shall think themselves a curse they were not here, and hold their manhood's cheap, whilst any speaks that thought with us. Upon St. Crispin's Day! But what a fool am I to chat with you when I should bid good morrow to my bride and seal the title with a lovely kiss! The Queen commands a comedy, Will. The Twelfth Night. Number one, Hamlet. To be or not to be. Taking the highest honor on our list is the tragedy of a young Danish prince whose plot to avenge his murdered father goes incredibly awry. That is the question. Despite being Shakespeare's longest work, the tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, remains his most timeless and influential, inspiring future greats like Charles Dickens and James Joyce, as well as contemporary classics, including the majestic tale of one particular Lion King. This above all. To thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Considered one of the best narratives of his lifetime, Hamlet has gone on to become Shakespeare's most popular play, topping the favorite lists of scholars, audiences, and actors alike, including those of the Royal Shakespeare Companies. Doubt thou the stars are fire, doubt that the sun doth move, doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. Do you agree with our list? The most regarded virgins of our clime have loved it too, eh? Which plays from Shakespeare are your favorites? What you know, you know. From this time forth, I never will speak a word. For more classic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Oh, great. Now Hamlet's acting crazy. Well, nobody out crazies Ophelia. Hey, Nani Nani with a hoo and a haw and a Nani Nani hey!